little trick I've been taught that when you do a shakeout, always give your bees something to climb back up on. I just found a few twigs that are over the hedge there and uh, leave them get on with it. They're climbing back in. They're obviously, they're going to have to be accepted to this colony because this colony I put bees in was queen right and the one next door wasn't, was drone laying. So I just shook out the drone layers on the floor. They're all climbing out now into this high, but they've got to beg, and beg their way in, really, which is what they're doing. But look here. Can you see that lovely pollen? This is what we've got, and unfortunately, that is all we've got. Just pollen. So I'm working my way down these last nukes to be transferred over, and it's immediately apparent to me how dry they are. Um, the year I chose to start my debut of Just Beekeeping is the year, first year, in according to French records, first year in 32 years that we've had a year like this with no nectar and problems with beekeeping with the weather, severe problems with the weather, basically. Um, certainly, I've never seen anything like this in, in the 10 years I've been keeping bees. Uh, what, all I can say is spring was fits and starts and then when the main flow was on it was nothing but I had some honey to harvest and the summer's looking like exactly that we had a bit of decent weather just before and we've had this weather like this now for probably three weeks we got all hyped up there's loads of rain we're thinking now it's got to break because normally I always have this kind of two week cycle in my head but if you get bad weather, it usually lasts a couple of weeks, then it clears. But there's no sign of any real change. It's not cold. It's just occasional showers. It's mostly overcast and dull. I mean, yesterday I was at my home apiary, and um, the sun came out for 20 minutes. And in that 20 minutes, the apiary absolutely erupted. It was incredible. Pollen like this coming in, loads of it. All really nice, but just no nectar. And as I'm going down these nukes, they all should be, we're in the third week of the flow now, they all should be heavy, and they sh I should have transferred these two weeks ago because so they should have run out of, run out of nectar. But they just aren't getting the foraging hours. It's absolutely amazing. I've got to come and feed all these. I'm putting feeders on every single one as I transfer them in. Under here is a feeder. There's the feeder. So I'll come back tonight and they'll all have a good couple of litres of syrup. I've just taken delivery of um, uh, four tonnes of syrup, that's uh, five IBCs that are night about, well, just, just, under, just, over, uh, just over four tonnes, um, and that's cost me 1,400 euros. I know that's very cheap for what it is, but boy, am I glad that I get that extra IBC, because we are probably going to need a lot of it this side of the year. It's a major, major expense for me in a year when I'm going to be struggling to pay all the bills, which I'm already starting to. And I'm already thinking about looking for other work because when you know you've got nothing extra coming in, you have to be completely realistic. I've even been to the bank this morning to um, fix different things in place so that if I go overdrawn, I don't get penalised for it. Usual stuff, but just to make sure that was in place. Um, all the charges I'm going through. Um, it's all a bit of a, a grim week this last week because I um, had the pleasure of being hacked by someone on my Instagram page and I've lost all my Instagram page and they wanted 200 euros for the, uh, for the rights for them to give it back to me and I said that you can go and whistle sunshine, that I don't pay people who steal things. So um, my plenty of honey is no longer, and please, please, if you did subscribe to me on Instagram, please unsubscribe to plenty of honey, which I don't think you can even log on to now, but unsubscribe to me and resubscribe if you would be so kind as to follow me on my new one called Bees in Brittany, which is absolutely great. And I've already got over 200 uh, followers, so that's building straight away. But to have 12,000 followers, and go straight down to zero is a, is a bit um, demoralizing when you work so hard to get that up. But it's all about sharing the good, wholesome beekeeping practices. And that's what my Instagram page did and will continue to do so. 
So don't worry, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to repost a lot of things that are on that page. And I hope that you'll um, enjoy following it and seeing my post because uh, I really enjoy doing it. It's, it's another thing we can share together. Um, you know, there's times in life when you think, what am I doing this for? And that's what I'm doing it for. I've got to look at what is left. I've got to quickly make decisions about my uh, future doing this. And my future is completely assured I'm not changing from this job. I didn't come in it for 10 minutes to give it a go. This is exactly what it's like. We have a week to two weeks of flow left. And for the next week, five days, there's absolutely no sign of a decent weather. It could still just turn around a bit. But as I've said to you before, your bees have got to hit the ground running when the flow starts. In other words, full of food. And what have they been doing for the last three weeks? struggling to get anything in through the doors. They've been burning more food than they're taking in, the, and the colonies have been getting lighter. I mean, all these nukes up there, they're all not light light, but they're way lighter than they should be. So, my management now is, I'm still transferring these in, but I'm feeding them. I'm getting into feed mode. As soon as I know, I can be absolutely sure there's no chance of any flow. I'm going to get my supers off or at least get um, the majority of them off and out of the way. Then I'm into my varroa management, which I'll be starting earlier because it's actually easier when you've got no supers on, as you know. But um, I've got to be, I've still got everything good in respect of the bees and the quality bees. I've got feed, I've got pollen subs, and there'll be plenty of pollen around. And because it's so wet, the maize that we have in flower in about mid to end of July, early August, will still come into flower. And that will be an abundant supply of maize because there is a lot, abundant supply of maize pollen because there's a lot of maize all around Brittany because it's very, very rural, as you know, and all the farmers grow it as a main source of winter feed and feed for their cows. So that will give a huge amount of pollen. We can supply the nectar, which we will. So everything is still good in that respect in our bees. So I'm going to start making my splits next week. Uh, I've stocked a cell builder last week as well. I think it Monday, Sunday last weekend. So that's ready to, to launch. Um, and I'm starting grafting. And I'm going to probably um, get a load of cells made and put, you know, obviously everyone, I'll, I'll use cells and I'll use uh, virgins that are alive. But I, that I introduced, excuse me. But it's just showing how diverse you've got to be, how you've got to change your tactics. I won't be selling bees this year, but I'll be going, able to go into the winter with a good amount of bees. And that will mean next spring I can get away again if I can just keep things going. I mean, in beekeeping, they say you need to build a reserve, enough for one, two years of crap weather. Now, this is the worst years I just said they've had in that I can remember beekeeping, but also 20, sorry, 32 years of the professionals doing it and the breeding program. They noted that this year is they can't remember anything worse than this year. So in terms of averages, it's pretty unlikely I'll get a year like this again. We don't know, but I'm just going to have to take it on the chin. I'll, I'll struggle like hell all for the next year, but I'm not going to let it worry me. I know I can do this. I know that we can move forward and produce good honey and keep up that good beekeeping practice because I'm not doing anything wrong and everyone else is in the same boat. And I'm just fortunate that I've got so much help from other people because, um, well, you know, it, we're just kind of going to be trolling along now. You know, when you, when you have to harvest and you've got the wonderful feeling, you've got a huge harvest to get in, that is fantastic and you don't mind doing it and you love doing the work. When you're just pulling off empty, empty supers and you, you know you've got to process those supers and process a tiny bit of honey, that is going to cost you more to process it than it will do really to actually, uh, than you'll get for it at the end of it. And you know you're not going to have enough. That's the demoralizing part. But it is all part of it. It is what it is. I'm just going to have to get on, um, keep going. As I say, it's not, it's not all said and done, but it really is not looking good. And I say that hand on heart. I've just been looking at supers and they're completely empty. There's a good amount of bees, but they're all in the supers with just no honey around them. And then when you get that scenario, the bigger the colony, the quicker they burn what they collect. And that's the difference. That is the crunch thing, you know? Small colonies that just recovered over the year, 
because they swarmed in the spring. You know, they're okay. But as I said, I can make splits from all of them. So uh, if you look back up there, that's all my mating, mating nukes that I was putting some um, mi um, mini plus on top of nukes last year, last uh, week. That's all good. That is um, all, all going fine. And I'm creating nukes everywhere I can. And this is where the big push will start because I've got to get loads of queens mated and loads of nukes split. But these, I mean, for instance, these are the extras. These are the bonuses that I made in the spring with the mated queens that are going to give me that little bit extra again because we, we took that decision in the spring to buy some mated queens. And what a good decision it was in, in hindsight now, you know. So um, it's all a bit doom and gloom, but it's not. It's just beekeeping as it is. You've seen the temperatures they've had in Canada, um, massively high temperatures, and they're saying that, there goes our train, and they're saying that the, the, the high temperatures caused a ripple in the jet stream, and that's what's brought the jet stream down so low again, right over northern Spain, and it's causing weather to be terrible right through. I mean, there's people in the south of France now that their chestnut's finished, and there's nothing else. That's it. The only thing that might be good in some places this year is the heather because it's been so wet. When you have a rubbish summer, they say the heather gives well. So um, I'm looking at all options, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, from uh, a very doom and gloom Brittany, I wish you all well. Have a great weekend, and I'll catch you again next week when hopefully we'll have some better news. But I'm just giving you an update because right now <laughs> I'll say no more. Have a good weekend. Bye for now.